I'd like to ask you all a question. Who here considers themselves as creative? A couple of people, maybe? Another question. Who here considers themselves as a designer? Maybe one or two? That's all right. So I do design, and because of that, I'm really conscious of these things that people have been saying to me lately. Things like, but I'm not creative. Or, I wish I was creative like you. Or perhaps worst of all, a friend of mine who recently left the graphic design world for marketing said, it's nice to still have a creative friend like you. There's so much fundamentally wrong with so many people in, in society believing that they're not creative, that they never could, would, or should be a designer. The thing about this is, is that to be creative, it's not all about just being a designer. So let me pose that question differently. Who chose what they were going to eat for breakfast this morning? A couple more people? Who chose the outfit that they put on this morning? The people in school uniform maybe pretend it's the weekend. <laughs> so by doing these little things, and as little as they are, you're essentially designing your life. It may seem minuscule now, but for the most part, we completely design our lives. We're completely influenced by who we're around, what we're doing, the clothes we wear, where we are, where we're going, what we watch, what we hear. All of these things completely impact on us. So to an extent, it almost seems like someone else is designing our lives. Until we make the decision to choose who we're around, what we're doing, where we are, where we're going, what we watch, what we hear, and we let these things influence us. It's in this sense that we design our lives. We completely choose what we believe in, what we stand for, and we're allowed to get creative with that. But the problem is, when so many people are asked, are they creative? They say, no, not at all. It's not that we're not creative. It's that we have this completely flawed, socially constructed idea of what creativity is. Let me give you an example of what this was. All through school, I was lucky enough to go to some schools that really, really encouraged creativity, really encouraged what they, what they thought creativity was. All through school, I was encouraged to perceive people that can sing, can paint, draw, play an instrument, that these people and these people alone are creative. These things I just mentioned are just skills. If you truly try hard enough, push yourself, force yourself, you can learn that skill. There are no roadblocks on skills. There are snowboarders who have learned how to snowboard without legs. There are people who have had strokes who have learned entire new ways of communication. There are people who have, as we just learned, heart failure and are doing these crazy sporting events. There are no roadblocks on skills. But these skills don't make you creative. They don't make you new and original. Maybe they make you exciting, but these skills by themselves don't make you creative. It's how we use these skills that actually make us creative. So, for example, you could be a great artist, dancer, musician, or singer, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you are creative. What if you're just dancing other people's dances or singing other people's songs, appropriating other people's art? That's not creative at all. On the other side of the spectrum, and the part that I really want to make clear today, is that just because you really like science, history, or maths, that doesn't mean that you're not creative. If that mold on a plate hadn't been looked at from a different angle, we wouldn't have penicillin. If tree burrs sticking to people's clothing hadn't been looked at as an opportunity instead of a problem, we wouldn't have Velcro. So why is it that so many people still define creativity as just that? As seriously just a bundle of skills. The thing is that these things weren't discovered through necessarily things that are completely art or design related, but they were discovered by looking at something from a different angle with a different perspective. Yet we still seem to define creativity as just this little bundle of skills. 
it's this teeny little undervalued component of society that only fits in to a small bunch of situations. It's not just in schools, it's everywhere. Even in the workforce, unless you're in a design firm, there's always the little creative team, and then there's everyone else. Everyone should be part of that creative team. So on that, what is creativity? It's how we use these skills that make us creative. It's how we think originally, it's how we be innovative, it's how we look outside the box, get outside our comfort zone. That's how we be creative. So I do industrial design, and I kind of struggle at times to define to people what it actually is that I do. I'm trying to think about it, there's not actually a defined skill or job that is relevant to all of us. Some of us can draw, others can't. Some of us can make a model, others can't. There's nothing that we all can or can't do. The reason for this is that industrial design has not been canonized. There's no set bunch of rules or skills that we all walk away with, except that we're all creative, and we know that. We all know that creativity can be applied to almost any situation, so we use that. Industrial designers have been doing incredible work in all these different situations, in developing nations, in healthcare, in waste, in sustainability, in all these areas where people who don't consider themselves the designers as such tend to end up saying, hold up, what does that even have to do with design? Shouldn't you be building a lamp, or maybe a chair? So on that, what is design? Design is demonstrating the potential of an idea. Design is problem solving, making, researching. Design is experimenting. We started demonstrating the potential of this, this crazy idea that everyone is creative. And, just, and demonstrating putting design into places in society where people don't think it belongs. What I'm trying to say here, what I'm trying to get at, is that the world isn't black and white. There's always this massive area that's completely subjective and grey. And for that subjective grey area, you can't just apply a straightforward skill or talent to that. You need creativity to solve these problems. All too often, when we see a problem, we see it as just that, a problem, a bad thing. And we don't think that we're creative enough to find a solution if one doesn't already exist. This is where creativity fits in. But all too often, we don't realize that yet. Creativity has so much more potential, but all too often, we don't yet notice that. So really, why is this important? Why does this matter to me so much, and why should this matter to you and to everyone else? I kind of think that what a designer actually is kind of gets lost on people. Take a look around you. Look at the chair you're sitting on. Look at this space that you're inside. Look at this entire building. Look at your entire life and try to find elements that have not been influenced by design. You'll be hard-pressed to do so. Look at it this way. Without design, you'd be standing here, not sitting because that chair hadn't been designed. We'd be outside because this building hadn't been designed. And we'd probably all be naked because our clothes hadn't been designed. So if you look at it that way, a designer literally used to be called a form giver, which insinuated that all we did was give form to something. But this is changing. The role of design in society is changing rapidly. We're, design has so much potential, and we've been starting to put design and creativity into all these different new and exciting places. We can do so much with design. We can do so much with it. We can, but we don't. Not yet. All too often, design is just used to make stuff. And then, design's used to script you guys into buying that stuff. Design scripts almost everyone's lives entirely. And for the most part, fascinatingly, almost no one has any idea. But the thing is, design has so much more potential than just feeding consumerism. Creativity has so much more potential than just scripting sales. If everyone considered themselves as creative, as designers, imagine the potential. 
So why is, it important, why is it important that we all grasp that little bit of creativity and don't let go? This is a favorite quote from a favorite actor of mine, Robin Williams. You're only given a little spark of madness. You mustn't lose it. It really plays off this whole idea that we are all born creative, but we let society suppress that. Picasso told the world, it has taken my whole life to learn to draw like a child, to unsuppress that creativity he was born with. In saying that, I'm not saying that a four-year-old is going to design some kind of solution that will help backtrack climate change, because they won't. You need creativity and knowledge to do that. But the problem is, in today's society, we often feel that you either have creativity or you have knowledge. You're either a creative individual or you're a knowledgeable, knowledgeable indiv individual, not both. But I'm telling you now that you can be both. Not just that, but you need to be both, together at the same time. Why? Because knowledge without creativity is kind of boring. And creativity without knowledge is kind of dangerous. It's hugely dangerous. You could just be designing and creating and churning things out without a thought for the consequences. Let me kind of put that in perspective. A recent Atlantic business report told us that this year, globally, we will produce 1.1 trillion kilograms of landfill. To put that in a bit more perspective, you know the Eureka Tower in Melbourne? That's about 7,000 of those. It's a little bit scary when Waste Management World also told us recently that within this decade, the UK is going to run out of space to put their landfill. Someone designed those things that are being wasted. Someone designed the packaging. Someone designed these products that break sometimes after three months, even though we have the technology to make things last for decades or centuries. Someone designed these super convenient systems and services, designs that just ultimately, ultimately encourage waste. It's a little scary to think that we could just be encouraging young designers to add to this waste. So, if you haven't listened to anything from now on, please listen to this part, because it's really important. It's important that people who don't feel that they are currently creative understand that everyone is creative, and if you don't feel creative, you can learn how to be creative. There are certain ways of thinking, ideas to keep in mind, that help people stay, stay creative. The first, and the very most starting point, is to be passionate. If you found what you love, that's great. Keep at it. If you haven't found it yet, then go and look for it. It's so important to be passionate about what you're doing, because if you're not passionate, how are you going to find that extra energy to be creative? Be passionate. Remember why you started? Remember what your goals are? Keep going. Be inspired. But on that note, some people really struggle to be inspired. A really terrible thing that a heap of people do when they're trying to get inspired is they look at what is directly in front of them. Of course you're not going to insp get inspired that way. So, instead of doing that, they keep looking further, and then they look at other people that are doing completely exactly the same thing as them and try to be inspired that way. That won't work either. The real creative geniuses out there, they step outside the square. The greatest artists didn't get inspired by looking at what artists did before them. They looked at nature, at buildings, at society, at emotions, at all these different things, but not directly at their notebooks and pens. Another really important aspect is to be hopeful. If a situation looks hopeless, you still need to remain with a grain of hope. As soon as you just think negatively about something, then you won't be able to step outside that square. A problem we have all too often is that we see problems just as that. They're a bad thing. But we should use creativity to look at these problems as opportunities. And maybe we should just redefine them from completely the beginning to see what this opportunity is and try to use our creativity to design something new. Another hugely important aspect is listening but to listen critically. It's important to listen to what's going on around you. But don't believe everything you read and hear. 
So much in life, as I was saying before, is completely subjective and grey. I mean, if a 12-year-old really wanted to, they could completely rewrite the, the French Revolution on Wikipedia. Being able to listen and think critically is about being able to take on the ideas of others, but then being able to question where they got that information from. And maybe their source is reliable, but maybe you should question who is paying that source. No pro bono scientist will tell you that eating fast food is good for you. But the experts that are saying that sugary processed foods are OK are also being paid directly by the companies that make these products. The last piece of advice, and the one that is the most important by far, is to stay curious. You know how little kids always ask why? And then they ask it again and again. Why do we stop doing that? Why do we start accepting things just as they are? Is it that we don't know the answers? Or is it that we're too embarrassed that we don't know the answers? It's not that we just know everything. It's that we start accepting the status quo. By accepting all these little things in life as normal, they just exist and there's nothing more. We don't need to understand them. Why is it that we start accepting the status quo? Why are we taught to accept the status quo? Why are we taught that curiosity killed the cat? Why are we taught to stop asking why? Design and creativity has a huge amount of potential, a huge amount of potential to help solve so many issues that are happening now. Design is demonstrating the potential of an idea. Creativity is what you use to design. If you can use creativity to, de to design, you're a designer. If you can design while keeping in mind what's best for the greater good, then you're a good designer. You don't even need to go to university to be a good designer. On that note, I'd like to ask everyone a question once more. Who here considers themselves as creative? Who here considers themselves as a designer? You're all designers. Everyone is a designer. We are all designers. Thank you.